كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا Assalamu alaikum everyone Welcome to Amazed by the Quran A series where I share with you what I find amazing about the Quran Today inshallah I want to share with you probably three examples along the same lines uh, And this is actually uh, a subject matter that's kind of difficult to understand at first But I think we can understand it pretty easily You know there are speech patterns in every language And every language has certain words that are almost interchangeable between one another Like you know Think of happiness and joy, you know, or anger and rage. These words, even though they may have some nuances and they mean different things, but in many cases they are actually used almost exactly the same way, interchangeably, right? Uh, similarly, there are sometimes words that are the full version of something or the, the lesser version of something, like demo as opposed to demonstration, which you can in casual speech kind of use interchangeably. Now bear in mind that as I share this example with you, the entire Quran is uh, an oral tradition. It was revealed... Uh, you know, and it was memorized as it was sent down and it wasn't documented in the way that a book is written down. It's passed on down primarily as an oral tradition and later on it is put into writing. So the Arabic language, let's start with that, the Arabic language actually has two words for giving counsel. One of those words is wasa and the other word is awsa and even if you don't remember that vocabulary it's okay. Wasa is used in Arabic when you give counsel that is of a spiritual nature or that when you give it over and over again. So basically, actually, in Arabic, the only nuance to wasa is counsel that is given over and over again. As opposed to that, awsa is actually counsel that's given one time. So I'll repeat that again. Wasa, over and over again. Awsa, one time. Remarkably, in the Quran, counsel is talked about several times. And if you take tally of all those times, like Baqarah and Shura, Surah Shura, Nisa, Maryam, all these different places where counsel is talked about using this language, Every time Allah talks about spiritual counsel, counsel to do good, counsel to worship Allah, counsel to pray, you know, this kind of counsel, He'll use wasa, which is actually the word used for over and over again. And every time counsel is of a financial matter, like, you know, inheritance is also kind of, the, the deceased left some counsel about how the money should be di distributed, you know. He uses awsa. So for financial or, you know, inheritance type matters, awsa, kind of leaving a will, leaving counsel behind, leaving advice behind, instruction behind, awsa. And, uh, and, and spiritual matters, wasa, which is beautiful. Because Allah is saying, you know, think about it. Well, how many times is inheritance going to be distributed? One time. It's a one-time thing. So awsa is a better word to capture the one-time nature of that kind of, you know, distribution of will, that kind of counsel. However, spiritual counsel, be mindful of Allah, be truthful, be kind, pray. This is not the kind of counsel you give somebody once. You have to give it over and over and over again. That's the nature of spiritual counsel. It must be repeated. So he beautifully uses every single time the word wasa. Now think about that. In the Arabic language, wasa and awsa are interchangeable with a subtlety. One is repeated, the other is not. But the Quran is very precise about where it uses each one with one amazing exception. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus is born. The Quran has a unique narrative about Jesus that the Bible doesn't have that he spoke the day he was born. And his part of his speech is wa ausani bi salati wa zakati madum tuhiya. He counseled me to pray and to charity, so long as I'm alive. Meaning Allah counseled Jesus. Jesus says, Isa says, alayhi salam, Allah counseled me to pray and to give charity. Except the word he used for counsel this time is the word that you typically find in the Quran for financial matters. Why though? This is a spiritual counsel to pray, to give charity. Some argued that perhaps. This word is used here because charity was mentioned, which is financial. But there's something more going on here. Remember in the beginning of this elaborate explanation, I told you that awsa is for one time, and wasa is over and over again. Isa alayhi salam is how old? One day. He couldn't possibly have been given counsel over and over and over again. He's only been given counsel to pray and give charity one time. So he says, Awsani bisalati was zakati. 23 years of an oral revelation, and the only time the pattern is broken is when the one time advice is given. It's what you have to call amazing. Another two examples I want to quickly give you are along the same lines because they're so short that if I made a video by themselves, they'd be like a minute long. So I'll throw them in here, inshallah. Is uh, two words, we'll compare two words. There's this word a'yun, and there's the word uyun. A little more vocabulary for you. A'yun is actually 
it means two things. Each one of these words means two things. Ayun could mean eyes, and Ayun could also mean springs of water. It could mean eyes, and it could mean springs of water. On a side note, the Arabs have the same word for these because anything that pleased their eye, they use the word eye for it. Uh, so waterfalls are called eye too because it pleases their eye. But regardless, Ayun could mean eyes, and it could also mean springs of water. Another word, Uyun, could also mean either one of these things. It could mean eyes, and it could also mean springs of water. But the Qur'an has a particular signature. So for 23 years of this oral tradition, every time Ayun was used, it was about the eyes. And every time Uyun was used, it was about the springs of water. Even though in Arabic, both of those could carry both meanings, the Qur'an decided that it's going to have a signature where Ayun consistently will be talking about eyes and Uyun consistently is going to be talking about springs of water. That kind of consistency in oral speech is impossible to keep up with. It's just impossible to keep up with. And finally, just along the same lines, is the distinction between two kinds of rain. The Arabs use the word Matar for rain. They also use the word Ghaith, Ghaith for rain. And interestingly enough in the Qur'an, Matar, every time a rain is kind of like a flood kind of a rain or a punishment is raining from the sky, Matar. And every, every time rain has something good in it, something that produces life and gives vegetation, Ghaith. So it actually distinguished between the two kinds of rain that the Arabs themselves would not distinguish. They would use Matar and Ghaith interchangeably. Rain is just rain, but two different words for two different scenarios of rain. Good rain, Ghaith. Terrible rain, matar, over and over again, again for 23 years. The point of this short session was to illustrate to you how the Qur'an, when it picks a word, and it sticks with it, and it, give, it creates a pattern using that word, it actually creates a literary signature for that word. And these are the kinds of things, inshaAllah ta'ala, over the course of this series, that I hope to elaborate before you more and more and more. May Allah give us a genuine appreciation of His beautiful word. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you next time.